Air Canada Centre, the Leafs and the Carolina Hurricanes here tonight meeting for the first time in uh, three times they will meet this season. And we are underway and glad you're along with us here on Leafs TV. Joe Bowen along with Greg Dillon and Harry Neal as it's played down into the Carolina zone and Boland is pinned to the boards as it's flipped by Belmore around the boards to the near side. Yuri Talusti gets it out at center and it is shot right back down into the Carolina zone. Ward playing it around back of the goal and it's up onto the wing and out at center ice come the Hurricanes. Onto the left wing side a long shot knocked down but smothered by the lead net finder and Reimer got nailed and he is down and uh, slow to get up and lost his helmet in the exchange as well as colliding with him was Josh Levo. And Levo not doing very well either as he goes to the bench. What a collision this is. A little outside drive here by Stahl and then Levo just can't get out of the way of him as when Reimer went out to cover the rebounder he lets the rebound go and he jumps out and Josh Levo can't get out of the way and Reimer he's had issues before in this area in terms of his concussions is down again. Well guys he's right to the right of Paul and myself here and his neck snapped big time right there on that play so he's in some serious discomfort but hopefully I think he's going to bounce back here but that's a heavy collision. Yeah the uh, Gianta collision was October 22nd 2011 so this looked very familiar. And Bernier I think will be in this game as he's beginning to realize that as well he's going over and stretching and Reimer now getting up but slowly. So we will see what the decision is made but Reimer's putting the mask back on. Bernier's halfway over the boards and Reimer is going to leave. Yep he's leaving the game. So the defenders of the disc dungeons tonight have changed some 32 seconds into this contest as Jonathan Bernier with a record of 1-1-0 lifetime against the Carolina Hurricanes and a 2.52 goals against average in those games will come into the game and Cam Ward 13-8-2 lifetime against the Leafs is down at the other end sporting a 2.78 goals against average in those games against Toronto. So an unfortunate situation here. Josh Levo, if he dives over him, he probably goes head first into the board. Now, I think he tried to get away, but he just couldn't go anywhere on that uh, particular what's play. What's it like to be a goaltender who didn't warm up too enthusiastically, sitting on the bench yeah. and whammo you're in? It's not easy, Harry, and uh, you just want to get the a feel for the puck early and that first shot out of the way. Did you ever have to come in this early, Greg? Can you ever think of a game where you might have had to come in this early? I, don't think I can ever think of one coming in right away like this, Joe. Here's Raymond with a shot, the rebound! Oh, and an excellent save made there by Ward's left pad. Carl Gunnarsson and Dion Phaneuf exchanging the discs, and it played back down in off Kozak Stent. Round back of the net, played up on the wing, and out by Alexander Semin to center. Stahl sends a long shoot in, and... Bernier may send a little thank you note for that one since it was from about 102 feet out. Big thank you note. Yep. Onto the wing and back to the blue line for Belmore. Long shot deflected right on. Bernier down. And it's underneath him. The second shot was a lot more difficult than the first one. You know, many have been questioning the two goalie system here in Toronto. It's been a real topic of conversation. I wonder if that'll stop now. <laughs> So all of a sudden, you've got a situation where you've got two good goalies. Reimer comes out, and you've got a very capable Bernier going right in quickly in this game. And Harry, the other thing is, why don't you trade one of them and get something good for them? Why don't we do it? All of a sudden, you see maybe why they don't. And you need two goaltenders. That's pretty obvious in this game. But they, both these guys have played well. It's a great spot for Randy Carlisle. He's right whoever he picks. How many coaches can say that? That's for sure. <laughs> Some of them are looking for the third guy to put <laughs> yeah, in. Or fourth. <laughs> Lupel unable to get the puck in over the line, and it's into the center ice area. As Ranger, pass intercepted, brought in by Skinner, and his shot is deflected off Jake Gardner's stick and ramped up into the screen and out of play. So a large turn of event starting here as you get a look at the defenders of the disc dungeons tonight. They were sort of the starting goaltenders. Bernier and Ward. We 
They'll hopefully get a report on James Reimer. Is it true you're the third goalie, uh, Greg? Not a chance. <laughs> Although I take the paycheck. Right? Yep, there you go. There you go. I thought you loved the game. <laughs> Not that much. Really liked it the 15th and the 30th. <laughs> Into the corners. Kadri getting it around on the boards. Centering pass goes off. David Bull's stick, but it's going to deflect into the stands. And out of play, and a face-off will come in the circle to the right. And uh, Randy Carlisle has already had to make a major change in his lineup. And Reimer is not in the game. Obviously, we'll take one more look at this hit. He goes out to get his, a rebound that he lets go here early. And when he does that, Levo has his head down and then does not see Reimer out at all. You can see that Levo feels as badly as anybody on the play. They want credit for the hit, I don't think so. <laughs> Draw one by the Hurricanes, but then blocked. Brought out in center ice by Colton Orr, who sends it down into the Kane zone. Ashton around back of the net, pushed into the corner. Trevor Smith has scored his first leap goal the other night on the center position on this line. And out come the Hurricanes to center ice with Bowman trying to get it in over the line. A hit there from Cody Franson forces the offside. The Leafs lead the National Hockey League in hits, which is something that they did a year ago. 218, make it 219 right there. Well, that's one of the trademarks of Randy Carlisle's coaching philosophy. Get in the face of the opposition and try and do it without taking penalties. And arrive in ill humor. 26th hit for Branson, which leads the Leafs. That was the turning point of that young man's season a year ago. As an offside comes at the Hurricane Blue Line, Cody Branson has been a much more physical force that here than he was, say, in Nashville. Yeah, I talked to Randy Carlisle too, Joel, about the defensive game this morning, and I said, is there any particular area that you don't like more than another? He said, not really. One of his concerns is he feels that the players are not working hard without the puck, and they have to up their level of intensity in that area. He says it's been a tough sell, however, and Harry, you know all about this because the team's winning, and it's tougher for a coach to get that through to them when the team's had success. You can't kick them in the puck maybe the way you'd like to. You can, but not as hard. <laughs> <laughs> Left it over on the far side. Jay Harrison gets it through. Oh, what a shot. And that went high and wide to the net as Jordan Stahl missed the target. Thrown back in again by Ryan Murphy. And Franson goes back to recover it for Toronto. Cody Franson up ahead for Jay McClement. And McClement just launches it down into Carolina territory. 16.52 to go here in the first period. If you joined us late, James Reimer started the game. But in an early collision, just 19 seconds into the game with teammate Josh Lebo, he was forced to leave the game after Lebo's knee struck him in the head. Sakura gets it out into the center ice area, and a bouncing puck is swatted back to the blue line. To the line, trying to get it in there was Bozak, and he just failed to connect with Raymond. Pass flex down into the Toronto zone. Carl Gunnarsson around back of the net with Knuff off his stick, but right onto the stick of the Carolina player to Eric Stahl. Stahl to the near side to Alexander Semin, but that was intercepted, and Kessel starts out only to have it blocked by Semin and controlled and skated back into his own zone. Here's the former Washington Capitol across the line, tried to drop it back for Rutu, and a hit there, and a long shoot-in on Bernier is thrown aside, and Captain Dion Phaneuf stands back in the net as the teams change. No score, first period here in Toronto. He's trying to ratchet up their home fourth victory of the year, and overall a record of 7-1. and one. Here's Ranger with a try, and that was more of an effort to get Cadbury to redirect the glove save made by Ward and Hell. Well, the Carolina Hurricanes have run into the same problem in terms of the goal position. Last Sunday, Anton Kadobin, the player that was in Boston all last year, the Hurricanes picked him up as a free agent, got him for a good price, around 800 grand. He's played very well, and his knee just collapsed right underneath him. The injury looked horrible when he left the ice. The good news for Carolina is he may be back next week, and if not next week, the following week. So it wasn't nearly as bad as it initially looked. Now Lupo. 
against the boards, unable to keep it in, pushed ahead at center ice. Here's Skinner trying to drive, but can't get around Jake Gardner, two of the premier skaters in the NHL, right there. Up on the wing and pushed to center ice by Toronto. Carolina trying to bring it back in, turned over. Kadri being surrounded, but doesn't get the puck deep. And it'll be regrouped here by the Hurricanes, and now Dvorak sends it down into the Toronto zone. Bernier played it away, and Carter Ashton finds some skating room to his liking. Sends it in. Ward mishandled the puck, had to play it in the corner. A couple of Leafs collide there, and Smith and Orr. And it is now around on the near side, brought out by Jordan Stahl. Pass through center ice, hustling in there after it is Nathan Gerby. Former Buffalo Sabre gets around back of the net, gets it into the slot. The Leafs are able to come away with it and play it to the line, and Ashton doesn't get it out. Gerby with it again. Over on the far side, Harrison shot is wide of the goal. Near side for Ashton, but not out. A point shot to flex in front of the goal. It's still free, taken to safety by Trevor Smith. Smith trying to slow things down, finds Morgan Riley. Here's the youngster carrying it out at center. His teammates are changing, and Ashton needs to change as well, so he sends the shot in that's gloved by Ward and held for a faceoff. The first period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Proline. Get way into the game by Pure Later. Excitement delivered by Five Hour Energy. And by Ford, go further. You are on a roll down there, Mr. Hendrick. One of my better reads yes, tonight. Unfortunately, well, it's a back roll. <laughs> <laughs> the draw is to the right of Ward. No score, first period. Draw one and a shot by McClement to flex it off the glass. Dustin Folk playing it around back of his own goal. Sakura gets it ahead at center, and now it is shot by Eric Stahl down into the Toronto zone. Bernier playing it away, and then got upended, and there's going to be a penalty here. Eric Stahl upended the leap netminder, and so there will be a penalty here to the Hurricane. The game are brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. Well, the keys for the Toronto Maple Leafs, the special teams are so hot at the moment. And the depth and attack, we're getting scoring from all four lines. And for the Carolina Hurricanes, they have not had good starts at all. They're pretty good at takeaways. Their special teams, however, in Carolina have been emotional so far. And that's cost some hockey games. And here's a look at the penalty here. As Stahl trips up Jonathan Bernier, and that's why he's in the penalty box, as you would say, Harry, for two or less. That was a fairly obvious penalty, wasn't it, Mr. Neal? Yeah, I would say, no doubt about that. The circumstantial evidence on that play was as strong as finding a trout in your glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> it only happened to me once. <laughs> All the power plays in tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto are brought to you by Just Energy. Energy made easy. Offside at the Carolina blue line. Let's hope this is not an issue. But if Jonathan Bernier was hurt, there was an incident a couple of years ago. Scotty McKay, who was a lead trainer and had played goal, was dressed in the Toronto dressing room. And we bring that up. Scotty McKay's been dealing with health issues, and we wish him all of the best, of course. But it was one of the more proud nights for him, although while he was dressed, he was sweating profusely <laughs> for fear that he might actually have to go in. And the Marlies, Joe, by the way, are not in the area. They're in Rochester as they play there tomorrow night, so that is not an option. So between you and Ralph down the hall. Oh, but you saw Johnny Bauer. This is Johnny Bauer's in the It's good. All right. Well, then a Hall of Famer would be a lot better than having Millen or Ralph play goal. Here's a centering pass in front of Steps in and gets around one. Looks for a minute in front. He does. And it went off the skate of Justin Falk just wide. Another shot stopped by Ward. Rebound in front of the goal. is backhanded in front. Another pass by Bowman. Didn't reach its intended receiver as Kessel was right there. Set right back down the ice. Brought out now by... Almost given away right in front of the net by Franson, but to the line. Just 35 seconds left in the penalty as Gardner goes back into his own zone. At center is Bolin. He drops the puck back. 
fed around the boards by Bozak. Kessel is able to get to it first at the half boards. Looking for room, gets it back to the blue line. Riley sends it into the corner for Poland. He collides in there with a hit by Belmore. Kessel has the puck back to the blue line and gets it returned. Cross ice speed, hit a leg. Derby in the way and it's shot down the ice by the Hurricanes. Back in the old days, in the 50s and 60s, teams carried one goaltender. Jerry Topazzini, the former Boston Bruin, on three occasions. Here's a chance in front of what a save by Ward. Just to finish that story, three occasions had to play goal. He totaled 60 minutes and never gave up a goal, which he has the league's best goals against average in the history of the NHL. When I played junior, I did the goalie for Marlboro's. Or see, Mike's had to go to the game, and he backed up both teams. Adrian in front, another tripping penalty coming here. Rutu going to the box just after Eric Stahl had got back into the game. So the Leafs to their second power play. They are second in the NHL in a power play proficiency. Well, it's all about speed here, and the Leafs with a pretty good rush chance. And in the middle of the ice, Raymond goes to the net. He gets hauled down, and that's where he's in the box. 8.42, and in case of emergency, there he is. Sitting beside Tim Lywicki is John Bauer. Eligible as an overage, I think, guys. Yeah, he said he would be. He would be. Wonder where his equipment is. <laughs> it's in the Hall of Fame. Of fame. <laughs> <laughs> he sent somebody over to get it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in this day and age, he wouldn't want to wear that stuff. Sakura sends it around the boards and it's out and down the ice. Route two for tripping. Second straight power play for the Maple Leafs, who are out shooting the Canes seven to four. Here's Franson working it back to the blue line, dishes it off for Kessel. Kessel to the half boards, looks back of the net, now works back and holds. He's got traffic developing in front, but nowhere to go with the puck so far. Now he gets it to the side of the net, and a quick pass by Bozak, intended for Dave Bolin, didn't make it through. Carried to center by Pat Pryor, and sent down into the leaf zone. Minute 22 left in the power play. There's Kadri. That is passed, blocked by Yuri Talusti. Franson drops it back. And Fanuf trying to stretch things out in the neutral zone, finds Kadri, who gets it across the line for Mason Raymond. A drop pass for Fanuf, fired in because he had to keep it in quickly. Now back to the blue line to Franson. Over to Fanuf. Fanuf fakes the shot. Franson gets a try. Nope, he'll come back to Fanuf. Fanuf doesn't shoot it, gets it down low. Back to Fanuf again. Fanuf moving to the middle of the ice. Lots of traffic there as Lupul now dishes it off. Now the shot coming and it's high and wide. Rebound to the side of the net. Mason Raymond cycles it back into the corner for Kadri. Kadri battles along the boards to Fanuf. Out of Franson. Franson holds. Off to the wing. Raymond with a spinning move. Trying to elude Ron Heinze there. Back to the point to Fanuf. Fanuf holds. Bank pass to the side of the goal. Hoping to get it in front but it didn't work. Rattled off the wall and down the ice by the Hurricanes, Brett Belmore. That shooting it wide from the point really works in Montreal with those boards. Not nearly as good here. Here's Gardner getting it up onto the wing. And Riley pokes it for McClement. That didn't work. And the penalty will expire with Gardner back behind his own goal. So the Leafs 0 for 2 with a man advantage and no score in the hockey game. A pass for Dave Boland comes in front of the goal. They had to wave it off, I think, because of the play of Ward. And it's back down the ice now into Toronto territory. Gardner back of the goal. This completes a three-game homestand for the Maple Leafs. They'll fly Friday and play Saturday against the Stanley Cup champions in Chicago. Dave Boland's first test against his former mates in the Carolina, starting a four-game road trip of their own here tonight. Here's Raymond across the line, rolls it in front of the net, Ward steering it wide. Carl Gunnarsson trying to get it back along the boards, and Kessel steps off the wing. His stop shot is right on. Ward made the save there and holds on for a face-off in the Carolina zone. From the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, you're watching Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey here on Leafs TV.
what they're going to work on throughout the camp and maybe through the season. For Kirk Muller, it was defensive play. He felt that their team had to be better in those one-goal games and tighten up defensively. It's been quite a challenge, though, because they've had Detroit, Pittsburgh, L.A., and Chicago already in the schedule. So a very difficult schedule, and Eric Stahl's just getting going again after coming off an injury that happened at the World Championships last year. It's been a bit of a work in progress. He's got a young team, but he's doing an excellent job and a real good coach for this hockey club. Draw one by Toronto. France and shot went wide, but there's a whistle here, and interference is called. And Jay McClement is coming to the penalty box. Kirby trying to get out to the point on the Toronto Maple Leaf win on the faceoff. And there was the hold up. And, uh, they'll call that every time off the faceoff if you. You can make the guy take the long trip around you, but you can't follow him and hook him. So they'll play four on four for a bit here. 11.43 the time of the McClement penalty and a shot right on. There's a rebound. And it's slashed away from harm's way there by Carl Gunnarsson and launched on a bounce down on Ward. I think they Ward lost that for a minute, Joel, the way he reacted in the last second. So oh, the first penalty kill situation and the Leafs best penalty killer is in the penalty box. Swept around the boards on the near side. Here's Skinner dropping it back and out of position was Ryan Murphy. The Aurora native goes back to pick it up. Now Murphy sliding back into his own zone. Ted Scarf, the longtime president of the Kitchen Rangers, wanted to remind me about Skinner and Murphy being teammates down at Kitchener with the Rangers. That's a giveaway by Skinner and a chance for Bozak. Raymond trying to jump in. Does what a save by Ward. Holy Mackinac, that was a brilliant save. Great play on a two-on-one rush. Skinner who's turned the puck over twice on this power, on this four-on-four -four situation. Here's the second one and away they go. Not often can you complete the pass on a two-on-one. Well done and a great stop. And that's just about athletic ability. I mean, Ward does whatever he can just to get across and get any piece of his equipment on the puck. And a beautiful scramble play by the goaltender and a terrific play by the Toronto Maple Leafs as well. Just a better save. 56 seconds left in the penalty to McClement. And it is shot down the ice and into the Carolina zone. One thing, one thing the Leafs have improved. They've had 10 shots this period. Tuesday night, they had seven in the first two periods. Seven on the left wing side. Cam Ward likes this building. He's played very well in here. Eight, three, and two at the Air Canada Center. 931 save percentage, 2.43, and a couple of whitewashes. So you're right, Milsey, he has. It was supposed to be a battle of former Red Deer Rebels. But uh, James Reimer having to leave the game. And a hook coming here against Alexander Semen for hooking. So the Leafs, this whole period has been penalties and power play opportunities. Still no score. Tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Molson Canadian diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. have been really calling it tight tonight for the refs so far and just a little grab with his right arm is when the arm went up and Semin can't believe it. 13.35 the time of the penalty to Alexander Semin they call it holding and the Leafs on the power play. A pass into the corner near side and Lupo couldn't come up with it. And Patrick Flyer gets it in over the line. Jordan Stahl taking it wide. Tied up there at centering pass. Goes back to Stahl. Back to the blue line. And they'll rag the puck at center ice a bit. Brett Belmore taking his time before shooting it in. Jake Gardner spins to get away from one. And gives it ahead. And here are the Leafs coming to center with Lupel's pass. And bogged down at the blue line, so we'll have to try and stretch it out again. Gardner onto the left wing side for Mason Raymond. Raymond gives the puck away with a pass into the slot, and it's an easy clear here for Carolina's penalty kill. And it's 12 to go in it. There's Raymond in over the line with his 
speed. He almost had a jump on Justin Falk. That draws a crowd, and Falk comes up with the puck, and he'll backhand it out and down the ice. Goaltender to leave it. And then starts out as the Leafs are trying to change their power play allotment. Played in over the line by Dave Boland. Into the corner goes Bozak. Boland got it free, but Falk has it around back of the net. Chased by Bozak. Falk's going to get it to center and send it the rest of the way down into the Toronto end. 4.57 to play in the period. Still no score and a half minute to go in this power play. Enough. Snaps it in and around the board's far side. Bozak let it go to Kessel. Kessel works it back to the blue line. A quick shot in front of Hole. Oh, and Boland had that surprise him and wasn't able to get a stick on it. Now a shot is gloved by Ward. He saw that one all the way from Cody Franson. And a faceoff coming in the faceoff circle to his left. Well, the Hurricanes have a high pick in this previous draft. And Elias Lindholm, Lindholm rather, is a real good young prospect unfortunately for him against the los angeles kings he got hurt with two hits with his shoulder this actually started with the youngster in the prospect camp in july where he hurt his shoulder and it's never been quite right yet but it's the second generation he had a father that played for the los angeles kings and got in 18 games as well fifth overall in the first round of last year's draft a complete player joe and they really like him already in Carolina and like all those Swedes they're all such terrific people and just another example this youngster is very well liked by Jim Rutherford Ron Francis and their management team so he, he he and Ryan Murphy took their North Carolina driving test last week Elias failed his didn't study according to Ryan and Ryan got his <laughs> and slowly but surely this team is building prospects that are very very good players ryan murphy's had a good start as well here in carolina on the blue line jay harrison got it up along the wing now fed ahead to grayson bowman who carries in over the toronto line forced back by carl gunnerson fed around back of the net alexander semen couldn't get to it comes to the side of the goal center in front of the net a shot right on and that was stopped by bernier on the short side good chance there for bowman Here's Gunnarsson getting it freed up, and the Leafs finally get it out. And at center is Kessel. Kessel in over the line. Works into the corner, flips it around back of the net for Bozak. Gardner had gone to the front of the net for them. Now here is a chance in front for David Broll, but Kessel couldn't get him the puck. Broll works into the corner with it. Broll cycling it around for Bozak. Bozak trying to poke it back to the blue line and has. Some room now for Gardner and a shot, and that was wide of the net. Ward was pushed out of the goal in a collision in front with Broll, and the puck comes to center ice. Rutu across the line, and back checking is David Broll to knock it away there from Alexander Semen. Morgan Riley slides it ahead for Kadri. Kadri taking it wide against Belmore. Around back of the net and into the corner. Lupul is bodied. Kadri unable to get it back. Was knocked down on the play. Carter Ashton goes into the corner. Back of the net now. Here's a swinging stick check by Ward and a good one. Ron Hextall used to do that except the stick was up above your neck. <laughs> Equally effective as I recall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, you left the puck immediately. Shuttering pass. That went just wide of Ward, and out at center ice comes Westgard. Long shoot-in, stared wide into the corner by Bernier. Up ahead for Carter Ashton, and uh, we get a whistle. Slashing call coming here, and I believe it's going to the Maple Leafs. We'll sort it out when we come back. No score. Paul Ranger is in the penalty box for slashing. It's along the boards. And he gets a little bit of a battle, just a little shot to the arm, and that's why he's in the box. And David Broll with a real good defensive play. The Leafs get caught. Riley Morgan gets caught in there, and here they come. And watch Broll right to the middle of the ice. He'll put his head down, skate right to the middle, and make a good defensive play. And that's one of the reasons why the youngster has been able to stay in the National Hockey League is his defensive game so far has been excellent. Second power play opportunity for the Hurricanes. Ball to the far boards, brings it around to the near side. It'll be trapped there by Skinner. Skinner works off the half boards, had it poked away. 
Bozak unable to reach it. Back down into the corner. Comes back to Skinner. Skinner steps in with a shot. Pad save made by Bernier. Back of the net, Carl Gunnarsson and Fanuf are in there. They battle as it comes free and right onto Bozak's stick. Bozak finds an opening and sends it coolly down the ice. And Morgan Riley on that last play just went a little bit too aggressive to pinch down, didn't get the puck, and that's why David Bull had to come back through the middle and make such a terrific defensive play. Here's Murphy sending it in. It hits the linesman, allowing Raymond to carry the center. He's going to take his time before sending it in a little deeper. Minute and a half to go in the period. Minute five now left in the power play. Justin Falk. It's the Toronto blue line with a nifty move to get around Bolin. Down into the near corner it comes. Gardner unable to get it away. Rutu back to the blue line to Semin. Semin to the far side for Sakara. And the shot is knocked away by Franson, but not out. Semin with it again. Stall in position to take the pass and the shot. And he just missed. Down in front of the net. Rutu goes down. Luck on the far side. Less than a minute in the period. 30 in the penalty. Chakara with a shot that is stopped. It's cleared and it's going to get out and down the ice. In Buffalo, it was Sakara. Now this year, Sakara. And if Carolina trades him, what is it going to be? I don't know. He's, he's a good board. offensive defenseman. He'll help for Carolina. That was one of their weak positions the last couple of years. Stall shot, deflects wide of the net. Sakara to the far side. Now a centering pass goes wide. The penalty box door opens. Rangers back into the fray. Pass off the side of the net, goes into the corner. Enough arrives there, so does Riley Nash. This is Rutu, back of the goal. Down goes the Leaf defenseman, Enough Puck far side, Sekera into the corner. Out of Rutu. Rutu tied up there by Enough. He has the puck free, but can't make a pass. Nash with it again. They bang and bash with it as it comes to the line. The horn will go to end a scoreless first period. Well, the Leafs got some shots on goal. That was a big problem in their win the other night. They've had 12, but they can't put one by the Carolina goalie. And at the other end, Bernier coming in in relief very early in this game. I thought he was excellent, very steady. His rebound control is what it always is. And a good start for him coming in in relief also. Reimer out 32 seconds into the contest. Bernier in. No score after one. First period summary, well, the most important thing came 32 seconds into the frame. That is when goaltender James Reimer in a collision with Josh Lebo had to leave the game after Lebo's knee struck the goaltender in the head. And so Jonathan Bernier has taken over, but you see the other statistical information there. So we are underway, neither team with a power play goal. The Leafs had three opportunities, the Canes two. And an offside starts the proceedings here in period number two. 12 10 the shots. Eric Stahl with two led Carolina, and Mason Raymond with three led the Leafs. No backup goalie on the Leaf bench. You guys may have to take over. I got to go down and get my equipment. Leaf Press wasn't as enthusiastic as I was when I told them that I was available. Well, they sent somebody up here and told me to steal your car keys. <laughs> Along the boards, battling for it, Franson. Lebo got it free, but it comes back to the blue line. Swept back in by Belmore. Back to the net is Derby. And along the wall it goes for Jordan Stahl. Stahl and Talusti free it up. Derby around back. It goes swung it in front and unable to get a piece of it. Now in front. Big save, Bernier. Another pass in front. Down is Bernier. Puck is still free. They're banging away at it, and it goes wide of the net. That was a wild scramble in front. Another shot, that goes off a body. And the Leafs trying to move the puck out. And Boland will get it to center. And it's gonna go off a Hurricane player down into the Carolina zone. McClement getting it in a little deeper. Hainsey, former Winnipeg Jet. Got it out at center ice. And now here's Carl Gunnarsson. Drops it back for Funoff. 
Things are changing. Finuk will get to the red line and pepper it in off the glass. Bozak tips it back to the net. Raymond with a glance over his shoulder to find Kessel. Sent it back. But that was cut off easily there by Stahl. And it'll be played off the boards. And a hit there straightens through to uh, Stahl into the corner. Bellmore gets it up on the wing. And turning with it is Alexander Semen back to Belmore. Lead pass, Eric Stahl, it's a two-on-one. Rutu is with him. Stahl in with a pass. Rutu back. Enough out of a nut. Enough to get into the net. And a quick recovery by Bernier. Shuts the back door play on Stahl. Bernier is very good at not getting out of position forward. And a lot of goalies in this particular play, once they get scrambling, end up on their stomach. And Gunnarsson gets caught way deep on this play here. A beautiful first pass to spring a two-on-one. Now, Bernier, what you like about this play is the way he's up. It gets right back to the post on Stahl. And a lot of goalies, as soon as his pass is made, it's a broken play. They'd be scrambling. They'd be on their stomach. Not Bernier. Up on his feet and then back into the butterfly to get across on the short side save. Rutu missed the shot. Well, let's yeah, he did. Yeah, he had a, it was a great pass. Too hard almost, Harry. Couldn't handle the hot. Here's Lupul on the boards. Turnover, grabbed off by the Leafs, but not cleared. And now played on the glass and out at center. And here is a two-on-one developing the other way. Lupul tearing to the net. Shot, rebound, down his board. Another shot. Well, we just saw a Leaf defenseman get trapped to give a two-on-one up. And Sekera, number four for Carolina, pinches and can't keep the puck in. And no forward back to help him, the two-on-one. They didn't get the goal in the two-on-one. They got it as a result of it, so. And Ward here has to scramble the old two-pad stack here almost. And then really Lupul just plain wins the battle on Falk as that puck was available right in front of Cam Ward. And the hot streak continues for Joffrey Lupul. Yeah, he had a four-game streak snapped the other night. But now he's got his sixth of the year. And the Maple Leafs have a one-0 leap. But Stahl is in a goal! Oh, my! That's the best fake shot I've seen. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Stahl had that roll right off the toe of his stick. My goodness, you don't see that very no. often from that family. Yeah, sure don't. Jay Harrison with a beautiful pass, tape to tape. And Stahl is looking up at the skies on this one. Jordan's been mostly involved in shutting down some awful good center ice from the last four games where he played against Datsu. And here's the pass, and oh, he just goes back to load up. And just fans on it. Sidney Crosby shut him down. He doesn't have any goals, but he's been tremendous defensively so far in this early season. He had his head up and forgot where the puck was by the look of it. He went head to head against Taves the other night, did a good job on him also. So it is still 1 0 Toronto. And into the screen off the blocking glove of Bernier brings the face off back in the Toronto zone to the right. Paul Ranger gets the lone assist on the Lupul goal, although Kadri was right in around the net as well. But at this point, Ranger gets the lone assist. The not, lone Ranger, Not Joe. very often you give up a two-on-one and then a breakaway and you're not scored on. So there have been a number of odd man rushes in this period, and we are just three minutes and five seconds into it. Kessel won't beat Sucker to the puck this time. Played ahead at center, Rutu over on the right wing side, and it is fed down into the Toronto zone. Back to the blue line, Sekera to the far side, chopped in by Justin Falk, bouncing puck, corralled by Mason Raymond. Raymond looks to move out of the corner, but can't, had it taken away. Trying to chop it ahead as Semin is on the boards with him there. Alexander Semin loses it as it comes in front, and it is Fanuk now looking for an outlet. Fanuk finds Kessel. Kessel to the line, will drop it off on the left wing for Mason Raymond, who drops it back to Fanuk. Then around back of the net. But Falk is there in a lead pass at center. Gardner got back to break that up. Here's Bozak getting across the line. He leaves it for Fanuk. 
but up down the boards will one hand it back in the net for Kessel. Kessel's pass intercepted. Falk with a quick stick there, and it's played out and down the ice. And this will turn into an icing. Well, Joffrey Lupul marks the 28th against the Carolina Hurricanes of last season. The last time Carolina was here, the winning goal he scored in a beauty as he walked right in. On Dustin Peters, and that was the game winner. And then tonight, a scramble play where he stays with it and chips it up over top of Cam Ward to get the Leafs a uh, 1-0 lead here early in, in the second period. And that point from Paul Ranger is a long time coming. It is his first as a Maple Leaf and first since uh, his days in Tampa. So the Whitby native is on the score sheet. And the Leafs are as well as it's 1-0. Semin didn't see that puck rolling at his feet. The Leafs flip it in and it's quickly sent back out again. Pass on the left wing side. Bowman's around the defense and a goal! That save made by Bernier. Ranger and into the screen it went. Ranger thought he could intercept the pass. And then found himself with no angle of pursuit at all against the Carolina player. There is right there. This is the interception. And Bowman walks in but can't beat the goaltender. Starts with a turnover at the offensive blue line, though, guys, and a good quick transition play by Carolina. Face off coming to the right. Go Bowen along with Greg Millen, Harry Neal. That was Bob McGill and our very own intrepid reporter, Paul Hendrick, down at ice level. Thank you. Quite all right. Bounce back of the net. Rangers setting it on the boards. Carter Ashton got a piece of it, but from his side of center, another icing, and it'll be brought back into the Toronto zone. You know, Bernier comes in in a very difficult situation very early in period number one, but the one thing about a goalie that's so technically sound as Jonathan Bernier is, he's almost like a technician in there. He just does his thing very calm because his positional play is always in order. So he's not swinging all over the place, having to get mentally fired up to play the position. He just calmly goes in. He has something to grab onto every time he hits the crease because he is so technically almost perfect as a goal. Harrison bouncing it in wide of Bernier. Left there for Ranger, round on the boards. Ashton gets it out into the center ice area. Harrison with it again, flips it back in. Gardner pounds it back out. And it is pushed back in over the line. Now brought back by Skinner. Up on the right wing side. Nash gets it into the corner. Big Orr gets it around back of the net, and up the middle goes Gardner, and brought out at center ice now with a pass for Smith. Ashton carries in, got a shot away, that almost handcuffed Ward, as it was deflected there by the defense. Skinner, tied up with the puck out at center. Riley jumped back in, and then that is offside, and so a faceoff coming in neutral ice. The second period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee, and by Just Energy. Energy made easy. Paul Rangers' first point as a Maple Leaf, his last points, came also against Carolina October 10th, 2009. He had a goal and an assist in that game. Brought in over the line and a long shot. Bernier has thrown that up over the screen and into the crowd. And there'll be a souvenir taken home with that. Other than Bernier's last relief appearance was a pretty good one. Yes, he came in and the Leafs beat Ottawa. He was as strong as he looks like he is tonight. Did not give up a goal in that game. You see the smile there, talking to the official. Always be nice to the officials, right, Milton? Well, Always. the other way of looking at it is if you're really going to give them a tongue lashing, smile while you're doing it. <laughs> then everybody and you, might, you. and you might get away with it. Some guys always want to make sure they're friends with the linesman because they might not help them out once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the toughest job in professional sports, I have to believe, and these guys do the best job in the world. Off the glass and down in over the line. Bozak. Did you really just say that, Joe? I did, and Man, I... Man, you've turned no, on the, what's, no. what's going on here? Hey, you can, be, you can be critical of them, too, but you have to understand, none of us would want the job. Can you imagine playing that many games and never getting a win? No, exactly. 
And being blamed for a lot of losses. Blamed for all the losses. We have to mark this day in the calendar. No, oh, no, we don't. Oh. No, we oh. don't. <laughs> There's Dion Phaneuf behind the net. He'll leave it for Carl Gunnarsson. Up on the right side for Kessel. Kessel to center ice and down into the Carolina zone it goes. Jordan Stahl will go back to recover it as the Leafs get a player change going. I think you're mellowing a little bit. You know that? Well, well, maybe you know, just a little bit. With age, do. maybe, you know? Well, just a tiny bit. You didn't buy a striped shirt by chance. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I never got one of those. Against the board, sped off the wall and pushed out at center ice. Josh Lebo and McClement. Lebo taking it to the net and a goal! a defenseman can't do when you're on the opposition's blue line is pinch and lose the face. The risk on that kind of a play far outweighs the profit. Look at four. Steps in, gets beaten, two on one, and the next thing you know, it's two nothing. A poor decision. His first National Hockey League goal and Levo the other night rang one off the goal post. I talked to him this morning, he says, you know, I got to shoot for him. Well, he's thinking shoot all the way, not even pass, because this kid has an NHL Major League shot at a very young age, and he shows you why. I think he's going to be a good goal scorer in this league someday. That was a beautiful shot against a very good goaltender. So good for him. Josh Levo has his first National Hockey League goal. Here's Kadri trying to push the attack. And it's down into the Toronto zone. The Innisfil, Ontario native has made it two to nothing. Oh, they're dancing in the streets of Innisfil. There's a wraparound attempt. Does it come from Cadre? Played back into the corner. Sent round back. Goes to the far side to Ranger. He sent it to the side of the goal. But it's cut off there by Riley Nash. Out into the center ice area. Right back into Carolina territory. Boland and Riley a draw the assists. Couple of youngsters there. Riley with his fourth point of the season. Nice offside or an icing call here against Carolina. Well, when you get a two-on-one rush, you got to at least get a good shot. More often than not, you don't. But on that play, it was well executed and gives Toronto a 2-0 lead. This kid surprised everybody at the prospect camp. Harry, he had a terrific uh, camp in July. He just kept getting better at the rookie camp before the big boys came in, and all he's been doing is winning a job ever since with this team. He's been given an opportunity, and I've liked this game, and it, he just keeps getting more and more confidence on the ice as well. 86 overall in 2011, 20 years old. One thing about the injuries the Leafs have had, a lot of young guys have got chances and more ice time. And made the most of it. Right, and when the, when the veterans come back, it'll be interesting to see who survives. Bouncing in a cap world when the Leafs are tight to the cap as it is. Dion Phaneuf will slash it in around the boards. Mason Raymond thought about letting that go. Carl Gunnarsson stood in and Kessel backs him up. Out to the blue line and in. A pass into the slot and Phaneuf knocked it away. Good play by Kessel. We talked about Sekera pinching and not having support. Well, that time Kessel was on his way back, and that allowed Gunnarsson to kind of jump in there and try and keep it in. Backing up the pinch. Turn that you hear coaches talk about all the time. It's the defenseman's job to make sure a guy's there, and it's a guy who saw the pinch to be sure he is there. Now, Street. And over the line, a drop pass. Kessel is there. Stahl was heading for the bench. Almost too many men on the ice. The Leafs get the puck, and it's off the stick and down into Carolina territory. So icing is waved off. Nine minutes played. <laughs> Out at center ice it comes. A stall got a bit of a break there. The puck hit the door. Now here's a chance from a sharp angle down. It's Bernier. He's getting shoved back into the net. But the whistle brings about a stoppage of play with a faceoff coming in the Toronto zone. 2 nothing Leafs from the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. You're watching goals in Canadian Leafs hockey here on Leafs TV. Threes are brought to you by Sokoloff Lawyers. Seriously injured? Don't put it off. Call Sokoloff. The personal injury experts visit areyouhurt.ca. Well, he's got three calls from those guys, that's for sure. 
Well, Van Riemsdyk, back spasms. Randy Collar gave the press a little bit of an update this morning, saying that he just woke up one morning, and as hockey players, it often happens to them, woke up with a muscle spasm. They're hoping to get him back shortly. He's again today had a couple of treatments with the day. Leafs have had two line. shots on goal and scored on both of them. Off the boards and played the center ice. Launched back on the wall to the near side. Chopped in on a new. I'm not sure that linesman Brad Kovacic saw that. His back was to the play as the puck comes in on goal. Oh, and a big save by Bernier there. Kovacic joined by Don Henderson of Calgary as the linesman. Brad Watson of Regina and Pentick and Steve Pizzari are the referees here tonight. Skinner, Markham native, gets it out into the center ice area and Ranger pumps it back in. That's going to be an icing charge. Boy, there's been very few icing. I've never seen the game. 10.07 to play here in period number two. Another calm save by Bernier. Uh, the transition, and it was a broken play that arrived right in front of him, and Dvorak with the shot. Dvorak with a couple of goals already for Carolina, coming over as a free agent. And again, Bernier in perfect position, and his rebound control is excellent also, and it breaks the Leafs out of the zone. Did you ever play against Dvorak? Sounds like he's been here for decades. Over a thousand games played in this league, a centering pass! And a shot by Semin over top of the goal. Side of the net, poked around back to the near side. Here's Eric Stahl. Challenge as the puck comes back to the blue line and a drive is blocked by Bernier. Ryan Murphy stepped into that and Bernier made that look like he was picking cherries. It is a 2-0 Toronto lead here in the second period. Josh Levo with the goal. What a shot. And the youngster from Innisfil gets his first NHL goal. Look at the toothless grin on that young man. And he'll be able to afford, if he stays in the league, he'll be able to afford a nice two. That's right. It was a good shot. I thought the Ward went down too early. He sure did. Gave the top half of the net away right away, Harry. Centering pass. Knocked high off a stick and into the screen. 9.38 to go here in the period, and Terry pointed out the Leafs had 12 shots in the first period. They've had two in the second, and both have ended up in behind Cam Ward. So the modus operandi that has been criticized of this team, being outshot, has turned its head again as the Hurricanes have 18 shots thus far in the game. And Rutu trying to stir things up and get a little energy for his group here against Dion Phaneuf. I think Phaneuf isn't going to buy it. And uh, Rutu missing a lot of last year, most of last year, and a good portion of the start of this season. Now a penalty coming here. And Rutu, after the... Tussle with by him. Phaneuf takes a... <laughs> you're right. So the Leafs get an opportunity with the power play to extend a 2-0 lead. And Kurt Muller saying that Fanup was holding on to, but I mean the stick came right up into the face of Dion Fanup right there. I mean he's got it right up around his ears. So the Leafs to the power play, high sticking to Rutu, and the Leafs over three with a man advantage thus far. They've been very good with the power play. Second in the NHL, 33.3% coming into the game. And route two for high sticking. Knocked out of the air and low enough by Franson to play it. Back in along the boards. Boland couldn't push it into the corner. Kessel chases and Franson stands in and this allows Patrick Dwyer in over the line. Hit shot and down is Bernier to take it and he's going to hold for a face off in the Toronto zone. Good back check there by Boland to pick up the man when it looked like it was going to be two on one. Now he comes back, he realizes what's happened, he puts his head down, gets in the middle of the ring, looks over and takes the call to make sure the two on one pass cannot get pulled. 
never too late to back check, never too late to get the loose guy. The guy without the pucks, the most dangerous guy in the ring. On many occasions, back down into the lead zone it goes, and now minute 28 to go on the power play. 2-0 Toronto. Lupel in over the line. Toad Braggs now sends it back for Riley over on the far side. Gardner sends it back. Riley with it once more. Now to Kadri. Kadri down low and into the corner to Raymond. Dishes off to Kadri. Thought about going to the front of the net. Comes back to Morgan Riley. Now back to Kadri again. Kadri down low. Centering pass. Loop will drive right, right on. There's a rebound. And Kadri was there but couldn't get the puck on his stick. And it is cleared out and down the ice by Yuri Tolusti. Gardner starts out slowly in his own zone. Gathers a little momentum and finds Lupo who peppers it around the boards. Mason Raymond trying to protect it with his skate. Stahl is in there and arrives Lupo to take his man Hainsey to the boards. Puck comes free. Here's Raymond back to the goal. Couldn't get to it. Stahl does. Sends it out on a wing and now Gardner chasing back to make sure Stahl is covered. But here's Dwyer in. Dwyer going wide, couldn't center. Good block made there by Morgan Riley. Just 10 seconds left in this power play. Time for one more rush. Bozak drops it back. Morgan Riley fed it ahead. That hit a skate coming off the bench. And although the skate was not on the ice, it did make contact with the puck. So a face off in the center ice area. Hey, Leafs Nation, just a reminder to follow at Maple Leafs and the TML Talk hashtag on Twitter for a chance to win great surprises. Well, the face-off in the center ice area, the officials are talking about it a little bit, whether too many men on the ice, but Fanuf wasn't on the ice yet. Even though he blocked the shot. <laughs> now he's not going to let them change. So the face-off is outside the blue line. Just one second left in the penalty to Rutu. 7.36 to go in the second period. The Leafs have scored twice in this frame. Lupel, Josh Levo with his first NHL goal. Ranger to Bozak. A bank pass for the speeding Kessel, but offside. And it'll be brought back into the Toronto zone. Best two chances that Carolina have had in this game. Both times they fanned. One on a two on one and then a breakaway where Jordan Stahl didn't even get a shot. And this was when the game was still 0 0. And Carolina's had their chances. And Bernier's been excellent also. Nash in the corner. Plays it around back of the goal to the near side. Harrison sweeps it back from whence it came. Side of the goal. Nash couldn't get a shot. Now back to the net for Dvorak. The veteran works into the corner. Still has it. Gets it back to the blue line. Murphy holds. Sends it into the corner. Ranger got in the way. Now gets it ahead. And Kadri gets it out at center ice. That went off. Harrison stick, they say. So no icing. And it didn't make the end line anyway. Ryan Murphy up on the left wing side for Skinner. Jeff Skinner to center across the line. Little toe drag move, but knocked away and brought back by David Brule. Up ahead for Lupo, onto the wing it goes to Franson. Franson sends it to the net, deflected wide of the goal by Ward, bounds to Kadri. Kadri cycles it back in and changes are coming for Toronto. Sakura drops back, plays it off the boards to center. Riley stepped up to prevent that, but Sekera follows in. Rutu had a bit of a speed wobble there, and it's played out into the center ice area. Well, it wasn't really a speed wobble. He wasn't going that fast. He just wobbled. Back at center ice it comes, and it is played back by Rutu into the Carolina zone. 14 minutes played in the second period. 2-0 Leafs. Long shot. Bernier is there to take that on the chest again off the stick of Justin Falk, and he will hold on. Lupul with his sixth, Levo with his first NHL goal. Stanley Cup in the 05-06 season, and then they've had some difficult times since. They lose Ron Francis to begin with. That's never easy when you have a franchise player like that. 
But I can tell you one thing, they're in a bit of a rebuild now, and they've got some good young players, and Jimmy Rutherford's a terrific manager, and it won't be long before this team's heard from again. Only two players left that played on that Stanley Cup team. Ward and Dahl. Dahl. Rod Grindemore's on the coaching staff. He played on. Played off the boards to center. Grindemore, of course, is the captain of that Stanley Cup team. You better not forget about the vice president of hockey operations who had a hand in a lot of things in that area, too. Ron Francis, who... Been an integral part of their operation yeah. for many, many years. He wasn't part no, of that. not that team, no, no exactly. No, he wasn't part of the Cup team. Yeah. But it's been a big part of this organization as well, working beside Jim Rutherford. And I would imagine someday when Jim wants to move up to be a president or move along, which I don't think he'll want to do because he's a hockey man. And do you think Ronnie at some point will maybe be the next one in line to take over this franchise? Well, maybe someone else may want him to be the general manager. <laughs> Funny business, you never know. Here's no, you're sure. right. Mr. Carmanis, of course, the owner of the team. He and Jim Rutherford have had a long, long standing association dating back to junior hockey. And a shot club by Ward. Then he lost the puck. In fact, he still doesn't have it. It was out the back of his glove. But uh, no one found it there, and it is held, and there'll be a face off. One of the challenges with Carolina, although they're right at the cap this year, has been the budget situation. A small market team in Carolina, they can't operate like a lot of the teams in the league, and that's been a, a huge challenge. And Kurt Muller, they got a good coach behind the bench now. They got some good young players coming, and it's only a matter of time, as I mentioned before, this franchise gets it going again. Kurt Muller played 19 seasons in the NHL with six different teams, including the Toronto Maple Leafs. Down into the corner it goes, backhanded around back of the net by Harrison. And with 4.50 to play in the period, it's out off Skinner's skate into the Toronto zone. Lupul is able to come out with it and carries it out at center with a pass for Kadri. And Broll offside. David Broll in about a half stride earlier. And Jeff Skinner, not from Skinner's Pond like the famous Stomp and Tom, but up the way up in Markham, and he's played very, very well for this team. 13 goals in 52 games, and only five in the last little while. 52, 51 goals, sorry, in 146 games. But he has been in a bit of a goal slump after winning the Rookie of the Year award. Two goals, five assists thus far, leads the team in points. Yeah, and, and this year he changed his fitness regime and went with Sidney Crosby. Fitness man, and he's had a good start to the season. They say he's got a lot more jump here early in his game. Calder Trophy winner 2011, and a bouncing shot in on goaltender Bernier as Toulouse deflected that right at the hash marks in front of him. And that gave him just enough time to readjust and get a piece of that puck. Watch this deflection. Good work to get the puck through. It was deflected by Toulouse on a good point shot, and again. Boy, as Bernier Sharps is coming in, he's seeing pucks that are redirected right in front of him and moving into them. The Leafs need there's a chance on a break for Raymond, but he can't get around the defenseman fault. Played around back of the net. The Leafs have not won a season series with the Hurricanes since the 06-07 season. They have been a nemesis. Playing down in first at Southeast Division and now into the Metropolitan Conference. Still having trouble with that. Right around the board's far side. Semin tied up. Bozak got it along for Kessel. Flipped back for Bozak. He tries to elude Justin Falk. Left it there for Raymond, who gives it to Kessel. Kessel back to the blue line to Gardner. Gardner over to Fanuf. Couldn't shoot it. Now he does. Sends it in wide. Too far. Kessel couldn't reach it. Sakura signs that his team is in need of a change, as do the Leafs, as it's played to center ice. 
Gardner got there first, and Levo's back in over the line with Boland. His shot is off the mark wide, and it was a good one. And it goes off the dasher board and up into the screen and out of play. Lusty Stahl and Semin last year put some pretty good numbers up on the board for the Carolina Hurricanes in 48 games, 135 points. But they're back together tonight. They were separated in Chicago. And as I mentioned earlier, Stahl's having a slow start. He's spending most of the season, or summer rather, getting back, rehabbing his injury that happened at the World Championship. Played out at center. Gordon Stahl couldn't reach it. Kept in at the blue line. Levo got over there to tie up his man. The puck comes back to the point. Murphy didn't shoot it, now walks the line and sends it into the corner. Jordan Stahl playing it into an empty corner. Quickly played ahead by the Maple Leafs, Branson. Levo, left wing side! Jay McClement needed to be the size of a basketball player to straddle that line. He came up about a foot short, and it was offside. He risked having a hernia there trying to stay onside. <laughs> While they call him hernias, they have to call him hisnias. <laughs> You're going to have to ask someone else on that. I wouldn't know that. With your medical background, I knew you wouldn't have just asked it anyway. Played out at center ice. Here's Jake Gardner back in. Kadri, Lupo, sharp angle, and Ward. I think Lupo thought that Ward might come out to face the guy that he thought Lupo was going to pass it to. And Lupo tried to bounce one off his pads or his arm into the net it didn't quite work but it wasn't a bad idea he almost got him leaning here you watch loop he's got his head up and he's trying to bank, bank it in you're right right off of bull doing a good job going to the net face off one and Lupo's shot is off the mark wide ranger trying to keep it in as it rolls into the zone that's blocked by Bernier. now he's in trouble but he was so close to jeff skinner skinner couldn't get it around him one of the better poke checks I've seen tonight. And Bernier is so good with the puck, and he normally does not make a play like this. It was rolling on him a little bit. But what you like about Bernier is how he reacted afterwards. Instead of swimming or panicking, he just stayed with the play and got a stick into the shot. And here's the play. It's a bit rolling here. He, ah, it's flattened out for him, but he just fans on it, goes over his stick, and there he is. Sticks his stick right out in front of him, and then deflects the puck out of harm's way. And Gardner got back so that Skinner couldn't step around him and go to the empty net. That forced uh, Skinner into making an early decision that turned out to be beneficial to Bernier. Well, he was in trouble. Yes, he was. <laughs> oh, time. you get out there, you're in trouble. I don't care who you are. Here's Cadbury back into the slot, and it didn't reach David Brohl. Brought back now by Eric Stahl. He works in on the right wing side, goes into the corner after it. Stahl trying to make a play, can't. And it is banged into the corner and around on the wall. Madry trying to get to it. Eric Stahl has 36 points in 33 games against Toronto in his career. His brother, 16 points in 22 games, mostly with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Gardner into the corner. Benoit tries to tie up his man. A minute four to go in the period. Raymond after it. It comes back into the slot. Back to the point. Harrison's drive. Block. Rebound. Fishing for it was Bernier with his blocking glove. But the Leafs are able to pull it through. Here's Kessel trying to play it around. Harrison who made a nice play to stay with the Leaf winger. And then backhanded the safety back of his goal. Pass intercepted by Franson. Branson tried to find Bozak. That was knocked down by Ron Hainsey. And a delayed offside now at the Toronto Blue Line. And uh, Jordan Stahl in there deep. He's going to keep the linesman's arm up until he needs some absorbing junior. He's one of the older linesmen. He needs absorbing senior. <laughs> Back in over the line. Nash. That bounces high and comes to the near boards. Sent around into the corner. Laid up on the wall, Lebo got it out, race for it, Bolin unable to reach it. Carl Gunnarsson, back to Cody Franson, out into the center ice area. The Leafs are going to carry a 2-0 lead to the dressing room. Lebo tries to make a three, and time will run out. A 
as the youngster who got his first NHL goal came rather close to potting a second before time expired. Well, the Leafs with uh, a better second period than first period, although they still aren't getting the puck on the net. You wonder how many shots go wide and how many are blocked rather than just how many they don't get. But defensively, I thought a very efficient period for the Maple Leafs. The one area they've been much better in the night is in the neutral zone. They have lots of players back, few rush chances in that second period against Toronto, and they were very efficient in the neutral zone, which created some rush chances for themselves. Lupul and Levo, 2-0 Toronto. So, Jonathan Bernier, who had to come 32 seconds into the game when... Uh, James Reimer was struck in the head by Josh Levo coming back into his own end. Has been letter perfect here. And uh, we're ready to go with the third period. It is fired down into the Toronto zone. Salmon unable to get to it. It's back of the net. And it is Stahl playing it into the corner. He and... Toluski try to cycle it, but the Leafs take it away, and Kessel comes out. Long shot goes just wide of the net. Now thrown back in by Carl Gunnarsson. They're going to call it offside. And in case you've just joined us, the big story here early in the game, and I mean early, the first shift, is when Reimer couldn't control the rebound, he jumps out to get it. And when he does, Josh Lebo ends up running right over him, being him in the head. And... Bernier came in at that point of the game, and Bernier's been excellent ever since. There's a report in the press box that Brett Willows, the University of Toronto goaltender, also from Manitoba, has been summoned, and he's in the dressing room as the shot was off the side of the goal. Centering pass, knocked down by Bernier. So uh, where Scotty McKay had to do it a couple of years ago, the young man is... Uh, Enjoying it. As it's brought back in over the line. The long shot goes wide of the net. John Keenan, back in 1959, who played gold for the University of Toronto. You might remember him, Harry, I'm not sure. He had to come into the game for the Boston Bruins, but played for Boston against Toronto. It's Harry Lumley of the Bruins was ill. And uh, an exciting moment for that young man's life. Along the boards and into the corner. University of Toronto was a pretty good hockey team in those days. <laughs> what do you think I played for for two years? I was leading you into it, but those years we want to forget about. Well, the we Toronto have... Maple Leafs here with a penalty is Nazem Kadri. This is the one thing the least with a 2 0 lead. They just don't want to give Carolina any life at all as they've been pretty quiet in this game, and he takes Nash's feet right underneath him and that's why he's in the box for two or less and the Carolina Hurricane power play which has been dismal all season long running it at the moment before the night 12 percent 23rd in the league has not been great it's been a little better in this game as they've had good puck movement but nothing to show for it it's awful when your power play is less percentage than a bottle of beer <laughs> third time the Leafs have been a man short in the game Draw one by Carolina. The shot blocks a rebound. Oh my! Your power play is not going to get any better when you miss four by sixes. And that was sent in all alone. Grayson Bowman sent it wide. I don't know. The Bernier threw his right leg out after he was down and out. It might have ticked his pad. We'll have to look at well, the replay. Well, let's get a look at that. But. And they're telling me in the truck it went right over the top of it. But he and threw that the pad net. to cover the lower half of the net. They got Somehow. over there, yep. Bouncing puck, stall a shot right on. Big save, another shot. Down is Bernier, and he covers up on it. Burtu had another great chance, and he's arguing that maybe he was interfered with. Another situation of how Bernier stays upright on rebound opportunities and his perfect position, he skates across his knees. Here's the first one, as Bernier finds it through traffic, gets his pad over, and it goes right over his pad. And then moments ago, he skates across in his knees and robs Ruki. 
To the line, kept in by Murphy. The far side, a shot down is Bernier, and he has that. Nobody in front of the net in a white uniform, so that was an easy stop on a hard shot. The draw will be to his right. And, uh, another look at it, Herring. No one there. Maybe get right out the top of the crease, cut the angle down. Shot went wide of the goal. Back to the blue line to Murphy. He sends it over to the near side. It bounds in front of the net and shot out and down the ice by Paul Ranger. 50 seconds left in the penalty. And the Leafs being outshot again, 29 to 18. Nice move here, Murphy's in! And he shot it wide off a stick. Skinner to Murphy, a drive, scores! That's deflected! And into the net it goes! Well, Murphy let the shot go, but as you mentioned, it, it may be deflected. I don't think it was. It. And it's a goal of first for OHL graduates as Lebo gets his first, and now young Murphy from the Kitchener Rangers gets his first National Hockey League goal. This kid has been playing very well so far this year. He's got a huge offensive upside and a big time shot. And Ryan Murphy just blasts this one. And you think he'll always remember this in Toronto? <laughs> He's watched many Leaf games here. I know that as a young kid. Did that not go off Boland's stick? I think it did. I think that went off Dave Boland's stick coming across. And former teammates for the Kitchener Rangers as Skinner, who rooms with Ryan Murphy, sets him up. Uh, how fitting is that? And all played for Steve Spock last year, including Josh Lever. Well, he's got three assists, so it's a nice start to an NHL career, I would say, for working. And a big goal here that cuts the margin in half, and it's two to one. And uh, we're getting word that it definitely hit pole and stick. That was going low and rocketed up into the top top shelf. We'll get another look at it when we get an opportunity. A stall and Bozak, and now Bozak waved out. Mason Raymond will move in. Here's a look at it. Here, watch this. Bolin trying to get it, definitely goes off the stick, and Bernier with no chance off the top. A whistling shot there goes high and wide. And the Leafs now protecting a one-goal lead. As it is shot down into the Toronto zone. Franson chopping at it. Kessel unable to get it out. Franson settles it down. And now round back in the net, played by Riley, but cut off by Alexander Semen. Skinner gets the lone assist, but the... Keynes are right back into it, down is Bernier, and he has found it in the blue paint. Carolina hanging around in this game, they didn't have much life at all for the first two periods, but now with that goal, you'll see this right tilted a bit. Ryan Murphy, of course, from Aurora, Ontario, so do you think he's excited about getting that goal, and there is Bernier again as he holds his ground against Stahl, who's right on the doorstep. Got those pads closed up just in time. And the face off to the left. It's a long 16 minutes and 24 seconds to protect the one goal lead. Here's Lupo laying it down into the Carolina zone. The Leafs have had just 18 shots, none in this third period. Lupo around back of the net. Gets it back to the blue line to Gardner. Dished off to Lupo. His shot is deflected and it's just wide. Boland into the corner. Lupo and Kadri trying to add some forechecking pressure and it is launched high out at center ice by Carolina. Bouncing puck that ends up on the stick of Riley Nash. Nash carries back to the net. Ranger knocked it away from him. Gardner now in trouble over there. Loses the puck as it comes around into the near corner. A hit there by Ranger. Freed it up. But the puck given away. Skinner steps in. Gardner got back. Skinner's backhand. And just wide of the net. David Brohl trying to pin it to the boards. And the officials employing him to move it. It does get moved. Belmore's shot is off his skate. And Ranger skate has deflected it. <laughs> it ended up going over the glass and past the net. And a fan did a cartwheel out of the stands. Didn't spill a glass. Getting... No, oh, good. Right by you, Henny. Maybe you could autograph it for him. 
And now with this aggressive forecheck, three forwards on the puck for Carolina as they are going for it here. Here early in the third period as they've gained a lot of life from that goal to get back in the game. It rolls out into the center ice area. Lebo chasing. Harrison gets it ahead. Backhanded by Dwyer back into the zone. Drop past Dwyer's shot. Deflects wide of the goal. Franson in the corner. Along the boards for Lebo. Lebo got it down to play it on the boards. Franson trying to assist. It comes in front. Wiley plays it off the boards to center. Wired right back in again. This bounds out in front. Wiley's able to get it up on the wing. And McClement with a nice little touch pass for Gabe Bowman in on goal. Centers! Oh, he's fucking drive! And McClement couldn't stop at home with Ward out of the picture. Branson. Now to Riley. Across the line for Jay McClement. In for Cadre. Couldn't get a shot. Takes it to the boards. McClement is able to dig it free. Looking for an outlet. McClement to the boards. And now Cadre cycles into the corner. Cadre works back. Grabbed on to there. Spinoff sends it back behind the net. Lebo couldn't reach it. Carl Gunnarsson pinches. Puck's got high in the air. And it landed right on the stick of David Prohl, who managed to get a shot away, and Ward had found it, too. So we have a good two-on-one rush here. We've seen a pile of two-on-ones tonight, and coaches don't like that. Bowling gets the puck across, but the goaltender stopped the pass across. Clement was wide open. Yeah. All he had to do was tuck it back here, Harry, and a great defensive player right there. Coming back into the play was Dwyer to save a goal. He was so close to the goal line, I don't think he thought he could shoot it into the net on the forehand. And by the time he got to the backhand, the chance was gone. Lay down into the center ice area. Gunnarsson trying to send it back as it go off the stick of Alexander Semin and into the crowd and out of play. Leafs TV proud to present Olsen Canadian Leafs Hockey from the Air Canada Center in Toronto. Team for Hockey brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Well, we've featured him a lot this year and rightly so because once again tonight, Jonathan Bernier coming in in a difficult situation just after the game started when his partner went down what we think is a possible concussion and he's been unbelievable here. Perfect position as rebound controls and spot on again. And the goal that just beat him earlier in this third period was a redirect that he had absolutely no chance on. Fired into the Toronto zone by Sekera. Left by Bernier around on the boards. Kessel ties up his man to allow the puck to squirt to center. Falk turns. Bouncing disc off a of body. Falk will try it again. And here is Andre Sekera with it again, getting it ahead at center. Played in over the line by Stahl. Carl Gunnarsson goes after Yuri Toluski and is able to play it up on the wing. Raymond trying to get to it but can't. Shot blocked but Stahl in great position scores! Carl Gunnarsson blocked the pass but they set it up on a tee. And Eric Stahl has been a leaf killer. Makes no mistake. Well, Carolina were down 2-0 to enter the third period against the Stanley Cup champions at home a couple of nights ago, and they came back to lose the game in a shootout. They did tie it up in the third, and here's the play. It goes around the boards. The Leafs don't get it out, and then a broken play afterwards, and Stahl in position A makes no mistake as he just rips it up over top of Jonathan Bernier, and that's a terrific shot by a real good player. There's the initial play as Raymond can't trap the puck to the boards, and then the puck hits Gunderson. He gets caught in no man's land, and it ends up right on the stick of Stahl to tie this game up. That Stahl's 37 points, and this is last 34 games against the Leafs. Third of the season has tied the game at two. And so the Maple Leafs, who may have been employing the rope theory again, allowing 32 shots, are going to have to open up some offensive gems as the shot is juggled. And then Jordan Stahl took a swipe at the puck and hit Bernier in the chest. And that always draws the wrath of anyone standing in the vicinity. And uh, I don't think there's going to be a uh, penalty. The third period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. 
and by shop.ca canada shops at shop.ca canada's largest store well, one of the issues the leafs have had is jordan stall 69 percent the draw eric 56 percent the draw tonight they may even get some puck possession and there's jordan with the extra shot after bernier makes a good save from the point and that's got the leafs attention out into the center ice area Faceoff coming outside the blue line. So a 2 2 tie. And the Carolina Hurricanes have fought back after Lupel and Levo scored in the second period. Murphy and Stahl have scored here. On Heasy. Gets it out at center ice. Brought on now by Skinner. His shot was a hard one, but it was over top of the net. Pumped back of the goal by Drayson Bowman. Skinner trying to play it back along. And it is stolen by Toronto and brought out now by Cody Franson. He chips it in over the line. Loop will run into there by Belmore. Walked along the boards, comes back to Morgan Riley. And sends it to the front of the net. Shot! Oh, and scrolling the block that was Brett Belmore. Young man from Windsor, Ontario, and a former Plymouth Whaler may have saved the goal. There's a shot right on. And Ward just does have that pin between arm and body and there'll be a face off in the Carolina zone. I kind of like Belmore's game tonight. Another one of the good young players that Carolina is developing and he just saves a goal here as the rebound gets away from Cam Ward and there's Belmore sprawling to help out his goaltender. Young man who was the uh, 162nd pick of sixth round selection by the Hurricanes in 2007, 25 years young. Saved the goal, blocking arm save Ward. Here's Stahl who tied the game, getting it to center. In old the line. In our opening, Harry, you mentioned that Eric Stahl had started slowly, but this guy's probably gonna lead this team in scoring. I'll be surprised if he doesn't. If he's gonna stay healthy, that'll be his number one objective. He'll also be a key member, I would think, some come February. At the blue line, Gunnarsson, enough shot off a leg wide, side of the net. Pass for Kessel didn't work. Bozak after it as it comes back to the blue line. Gunnarsson can't deliver it at the net, so he plays it back to the goal. And it is gobbled up there by Falk. Now for Sakura. Andre Sakura starts out of his own zone, waits as his teammates get a change on the forward line. Pass comes ahead for Jordan Stahl. Old Boland almost picked the pocket of Justin Falk there. But Falk now sends it down into the Toronto zone. Leads two, and the Hurricanes two. Boland into the corner, up ahead for Jay McClement, who was knocked down. He got it out over the line, but now brought out by Ranger, whose pass was partially blocked and knocked down into Carolina territory. McClement knocked down at the blue line. Pass up the middle, intercepted. Chip to the near wing. McClement is in over the line. He's going to play it in deep and try to get around Ryan Murphy. Knocked down on the play. Murphy comes up with the puck. And the Aurora native gets it up on the board, but Derby couldn't get it out. Here's the diminutive Ethan Derby shooting it off the glass and down into the Toronto zone. Bound back to the net is Dvorak. Dvorak looking in front, peeping in there was Belmore as it comes back to the blue line. And a screenshot went by Bernier, and I think he heard that. Now a shot stopped in front. There's a loose puck in front of the goal, taken to safety by Kadri, but not cleared. And then Belmore almost gave the way to Lupo. But on the far side, a drive stopped by Bernier, rebound. High stick making contact. Wouldn't have been a goal, but the Leafs are able to get it free now and now try to move it out. Lupo having some difficulties with it, just gets it out over the line. Shot back in again, and Gardner's there. Sorry, Joe, turnovers now really coming to the forefront. The Leafs can't get it out of their zone. They're turning it over the neutral zone, and that's why they haven't had much zone time in Carolina zone in the third period. Mason Raymond couldn't get into the zone. Riley backpedaling, gets it ahead for Raymond. That did not make any contact and will result in an icing charge. Although the Leafs had gotten most of the, cha the change done, there will be a couple of players that have been on for a while, and Randy Carlisle, you can see, is not a happy camper at this particular point. Well, when you get up 2-0, and two periods have gone, and all of a sudden the 
league disappears, if you were coaching, you'd be upset too. He's been upset for a while, but his team's been winning, so he couldn't be real mad, Harry, but he has not liked the way his group has played. Raymond doesn't get it into the zone, now gets a second try at it. Diagonal shooting this time will get it deep. Bozak in against the wall, battling in there with Kessel. Since the start of the second period, the Leafs have been outshot 25 to 11. But both teams have scored twice. Here's Eric Stahl sending it to the net, directed wide by Bernier. Coming out of the corner with it is Kirby. Kirby back towards the blue line, has it go off Mason Raymond, and it's pushed ahead and off Raymond Kirby. Trying to get to it, and so is Carl Gunnarsson. Kirby gets it in over the line. Assistant able to tie things up. And the Hurricanes get it back in off a deflection by Jordan Stahl. Like Carl Gunnarsson was held there a little bit by Patrick Dwyer, but no call. Now here is enough. A quick pass deflected down into the zone by Kessel. And back into the zone it goes. Call there for icing. And it's out at center ice and shot in by Dave Bolin. Bill Kessel has been held at just two shots on goal. He's been real quiet today. That's not much going at all. That center to the line. Offside is called as Skinner tried to move in there. Now we get some pushing and shoving and roaring in there is Brett Belmore. And that has everybody tangled up in front of the net. And uh, at this particular point, Knuckles Bernier has been left alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, a break in the action here. The game is tied at twos at the ACC. Two with 7.37 per play in the third period. Just a reminder, Canada shops at shop.ca. Shop.ca, Canada's largest store. Awesome. So the faceoff outside the blue line and a 2-2 tie. 7.37 to go. This is overtime almost. The draw one by the Hurricanes and sent in over the line. If it is overtime, it's something the Hurricanes are quite familiar with. And haven't enjoyed. No. Down into the zone for Haynes in around on the far side. Chopped at, grabbed off by Nash. Fed ahead, Dvorak, two on one break. Going to the net, Belmore! And he couldn't get the puck. Leafs try to counterattack with the defenseman trapped. Lupo, a pass just deflected into the zone and out of the net. Ward to play it away from Kadri. Aaron pass. This could be a nice oh, goal. Oh my! Jonathan Quick of Los Angeles had a brain cramp, and Jonathan Bernier has had one here. I thought it was going to be icing, didn't you? I did, and they're discussing it now. Because now, of course, you don't have to wait till somebody touches it. Did Bernier think that? No, I think he just plain misplayed it. It was not touched, I believe. And as long as it's not touched, that's icing, and then it comes off the boards, and you can see the reaction by Jonathan Bernier on the play. Takes his eyes off the puck for a moment, and it goes off the inside of the skate into the net. He just plain fans on it. The linesman down deep waved it off. No icing. Yeah, and I. My goodness! If it hits a stick on the way, it's different. But if it doesn't, now Randy Carlisle is going to get the explanation from Brad Watson. Isn't it if the goalie comes out to play it? Yes. That However, the icing's uh, waved off. Well, there was never. Off. I don't there, believe there was that. Never an issue. That there was never. He took off, pants off the glass, and off his foot and into the net. Oh my! 13:04, the time of the biggest break of this season. Dion Phaneuf back to tap his goaltender on the pads, but what a break here! Ron Haynes. I mean, it was always get credit for the was, goal. It was always icing. 
Ainsley hadn't scored a goal until he scored against Chicago on Tuesday night in 122 games going back to his days in Atlanta. Back to back. <laughs> wow, Cam Ward's going to get the assist. But here's where that hybrid icing is an issue, I suppose, because Bernier obviously did not play that. He just he just miscued it, Joe. Simple as that. He went to play it. It was coming into his crease. He misplayed it. And unfortunately for Bernier, hit him in the foot and went in. It's that simple. Well, the crowd is in uh, stunned silence at this point. And now the Leafs, late in a third period, trail in a hockey game. Played down into the corner. Around the boards it goes. And out at center ice and played down into the Toronto zone. Down back of the net, trying to come up with it is Nathan Gerby. Knocked down on the play, but is able to get a piece of the puck there against McClement, and Cody Franson is able to dig it free. Out into the center ice area it goes. Well, the Leafs trail the Edmonton Oilers. 5 to 4 until 1929 of the third period. To keep their streak going in a 6 to 5 overtime victory. Now they have 520 to go to try and find an equalizer after a strange goal. Here's a chance for Skinner. Stopped by Bernier and he covers up on it. We'll go to commercial break. Everybody take a deep breath. It is 3 2 Carolina. So if it hits a stick on the way, it isn't icing, but it doesn't. And so the linesman will just put his arm up for icing, which is the correct call. And then the other linesman, who you can't see, waved it off. Well, as soon as it hits Bernier here, he waves it off, and then, of course, <laughs> it goes in the net. Yep. There's the he's, linesman he's who makes the call. Yep. He's yelling but icing all the way. He's not the linesman that makes the call. It's the one down deep you can't see that waved it off. That's the referee over on the other side. And the reason that he waved it off is because they felt that the Carolina player was in position ahead of Riley. The, and the hybrid icing then goes to the offensive team. And Bernier simply nonchalanted it, if you will, and into the net it went. Now it's icing. <laughs> and uh, 19,000 linesman in the building decide to react to that. Well, lesson learned. Uh, hybrid icing, you cannot, really, you know, I mean, however, he misplayed it, obviously, but, but he, I think, took for granted that the icing was going to be called, and it was not. We'll find out when they talk to him after the game. Right now, the Leafs have 444 with which to work to try and get their goaltender off the hook. Oh, he just plain misplayed it, so period. Here's Kessel in over the line. Kessel with a snapshot, and the five hole closed up there by Cam Ward. The face off will be to the left. Tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Dave Bolin will take the face off to the left of Cam Ward. The draw scrum that goes into the corner. Bolin arrives there, gets it around back of the net. Jay McClement to Josh Levo off the boards to Gunnarsson and as he tried to go D to D to his partner it came out over the line. Leafs in Chicago on Saturday then we turn to host Anaheim Tuesday. Here's Boland in. Playing it around the boards and back of the net. McClement to Levo to Gunnarsson. Sent back in along. Levo couldn't keep it in for him, and it's down into the Toronto zone. Change is coming for both teams. Off the boards for Jay McClement. Played in along the boards. Bolt sends it around back to the net. Wire on the fire boards. Pounces on it. Gerby got it out. Nice play by Stahl to take that out of the air. Stahl in over the line. Pass into the slot area. Doesn't work. It's still free. And Riley shows you some quickness there to take it to safety. 
Now up the middle. Off the stick of Kadri, onto the stick of Raymond. Up on the right side for Lupo. Lupo stick him through! And his shot went high and ends up in the screen. Did it go off the crossbar? The delivery of the game is presented by Purolator. Excitement delivered. An icing play. It goes into the crease, so Bernier goes to play it. And when he does, he just plain fans out him. Hits him in the big toe and goes in the net. Tough play for the goalie. And quite honestly, on a play like that as a goalie, all you can really do is, I mean, it's not funny. Particularly when you're the cause of a situation late in the game. You're just going to let it go. Not much you can, yeah. It happens. It, Bernier's made a couple of saves since then. Playing around the boards to the near side. Riley back of the net. Lupo tried to center, hit the back of the goal. It does come out. And then pinching down is Franson. Franson in the corner. He's around back of the net with it. Trying to find an opening. Finds Morgan Riley. Shot to flex in front of the goal. And the quick hands of Cam Ward has put an end to that scoring effort. And you know what the guys the bench are saying? We owe the goalie one because they know that Bernier threw up this season already, as young as it is, has bailed that team out more than once. So this group now, I can tell you on the bench, say, come on, guys, we owe them one. And you can see at the moment, the Leafs have picked up their intensity level a little bit since they have going down by a goal. 2.39 to play, third period, 3-2, Carolina. Draw one by the Leafs, and Levo with a slash at it, didn't get it past the defenseman's skate. Ranger pinches. And now Raymond trying to make sure that it's not. And a nice play made by Gardner to knock that pass out of the air. Bernier leaving it back of the goal for Gardner. Well, this early hockey season has seen some rather long scoring plays. A centering pass doesn't go onto the stick of Raymond. And it is played to the line, but not out. Ranger. Barges down the wall to try and keep it in. Has it in his skates. Can't get it in any deeper. And it is pushed to center ice past Lebo. And Gardner will go back. 150 to go. Now oh, a giveaway and a wrapper on the tip coming out. The shot by Skinner went wide. Gardner lost it back of the net. Fanouf, a pass up onto the left wing side. Raymond was going to the bench. Be played down into the Toronto end. We'll keep an eye on Bernier. You got an LA King and Jonathan Quick with a goal like that, and a former LA King. You think they'll be talking to one another tonight? Here's Lupo coming out, and so is Bernier. Lupo weaves in on the right wing side, sends it in on goal. Big rebound! Oh, what a chance that was for Bozak, and he came up wanting. Net empty down to our right, and the puck. Controlled by Toronto with a minute seven to go. Kessel, rink wide for Nuff. Out at center and chopped it over the line. Racing in there after it, Bozak, but what a chance he had to tie the game. This, Branson, look. <laughs> I think he might have hurt himself trying to skate that way. But he looked, for all of you older viewers, J.C. Trombley couldn't have done that any better, Harry. <laughs> you think I thought it was Tiny Tim limping over to get some Easter eggs. <laughs> Here's Lupo going end to end. And the chance is Bozak later right there. And a timeout call. <laughs> Cody Franson looked like he was trying to work it through worked. some quicksand. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it did. <laughs> so the face off is to the right. In the Carolina zone, 51.5 seconds left in the third period. And a, almost a 200-foot shot by Ron Hainsey is the difference in this hockey game, 3-2. to two. Out comes Kessel, Bozak. Lupo, Kadri, Fanuf, and Franson. The six attackers. The draw scrummed, 
And one. Kessel with it now. Tries to send it in. The goal post. Branson pushes it around back into that for Lupo. Lupo loses it. Played off the glass and out at center. But no icing? <laughs> you can't do it twice. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I give up. Here's a chance. Diving for it with Kadri. Playing around on the boards and into the corner. Dvorak. Unable to get to it. Sent out at center for Dwyer. Bumped there by Kadri. And the puck turned over, but a penalty to Kadri. Well, it was from behind, but it certainly wasn't very physical. And Kadri almost tied this game up as he rattles one right off the post here and has Ward beat cleanly up top. And then in the same shift, moments afterwards, a little shot from behind. Yep, right on the letters. That's why he's in the box. So with 14.5 seconds to go, Carolina has the faceoff where they want it and the manpower situation that they want as they look to win their second on the road this season. As boarding at 1945 to Kadri. Down into the corner it goes Eric Stahl. Far side, Gardner, six seconds left. Punches it out at center, it's rattled away. That'll do it. A very strange ending to this hockey game. And there is the winning goal scorer, Ron Hainsey. And a tough feeling for Jonathan Bernier. At the end of the day, it was icing, then the hybrid rule waved it off, but it doesn't matter because Bernier went to play it anyway, and when he played it, he just misplayed it. And it ended up in the net, and nobody feels worse than Jonathan Bernier at the moment in this entire building. Well, when you have a 2-0 lead at home and a team that you're playing against doesn't look like they're too involved, and you blow the 2-0 lead and then get out lucked in the end. Tough one to handle. Tonight's three stars from Toronto brought to you by Molson Canadian. Diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Eric Stahl, star number one, his 17th career goal versus the Leafs. Josh Lebo, his first NHL goal. And Ryan Murphy from Aurora, his first National Hockey League goal as well. The Leafs dropped to three and two on home ice and six and two on the season as the Carolina Hurricanes continue their mastery over the Leafs.